Wind power, as we all know, is a clean and renewable energy source. Wind turbines harness energy from the wind using mechanical power to spin a generator and create electricity. Not only is wind an abundant and inexhaustible resource, but it also provides electricity without burning any fuel or polluting the air. We are all aware of the wind energy contribution in renewables across the world. We are also aware of the type of wind turbine which is frequently talked about and installed at the wind sites, the horizontal axis wind turbines. But what many of us are not aware of is that there is another special type of wind turbine taking shape in the far north of the world that is a potential candidate to disrupt the renewable contribution from wind. Hi, I am Abhishek and you are watching Revolutionary Engineering. Before talking about that in detail, it will be good to first understand the precursor of that ambitious innovation, a vertical axis wind turbine. As against horizontal ones, it is a type of wind turbine where the main rotor shaft is set transverse to the wind while the main components are located at the base of the turbine. This arrangement has three main advantages. Firstly, it allows the generator and gearbox to be located close to the ground, facilitating service and repair. And secondly, since the major portion of the weight is at the base, the entire structure is well balanced. But if we talk about the biggest advantage, it is that the vertical axis wind turbines do not need to be pointed into the wind, which removes the need for wind sensing and orientation mechanisms. Broadly, the vertical axis wind turbines are classified into two types. First is the lift type, which utilizes the lift aerodynamic force to rotate. By flowing around the structure, the wind creates a suction on the front side of the turbine, driving the wings to rotate. The resultant airflow, shown in red arrow, forms a positive angle of attack to the wing, generating lift and causing the wings to rotate. Because of the shape of the wings, they do not experience as much drag as Savonius or drag type wind turbines. Once the rotation starts, Darius wind turbines are able to accelerate to rotate faster than the wind speed. The second type of vertical axis wind turbine is the drag type that relies on the flow resistance mechanism to turn their rotors. In simple words, the dynamic pressure of the wind against the blades pushes the rotor into rotation. At the same time, the opposite side of the blades encounters a force of aerodynamic resistance or drag. As the vertical axis blades goes around, it moves more or less gets torque on 300 degrees of 360 degree rotation. There's a very small zone where it doesn't contribute to torque as against the general understanding that in vertical axis wind turbines, blades go with the wind on one side but against the wind on the other side and therefore they have difficulty in turning. Computer modeling suggests that wind farms constructed using vertical axis wind turbines are 15% more efficient than conventional horizontal axis wind turbines as they generate less turbulence. Mind that the efficiency of vertical axis wind turbine is less than that of horizontal ones when we compare them on a one-to-one -one basis. If we plot a graph between efficiency or power coefficient versus step speed ratio, lift type vertical axis wind turbines such as Jarius achieves the efficiency mark of 40% at tip speed ratio between 4 and 5 compared to 50% for conventional 3 blade horizontal ones with a tip speed ratio close to 7. Tip speed ratio is the ratio between the wind blade speed at its tip and the speed of the wind. Since the vertical axis wind turbines leave considerably less of a turbulent wake behind them, more of such turbines can be placed closer to each other, increasing the output from the given area. But there is yet another approach while comparing the efficiencies. That is, not the swept area of the blades, but the height and width of the area swept by vertical axis wind turbines to be the same as that of diameter of circles swept by horizontal ones. And when we do this, we get a totally different picture. Here is how. The swept area for a vertical axis wind turbine is a rectangle and for a horizontal, it's a circle. When we draw a square with the height and width same as diameter of a circle, you can notice that the square has a larger area and therefore the capture efficiency for a vertical axis wind turbine, which is nothing but a measure of how much of the kinetic energy flowing through this cross section that you can capture, can at least approach near to that of horizontal axis wind turbines if not become equal. Taking this idea along with novel additions, a disruptive innovation has come up from Norway in the wind turbine sector. 
called a contra-rotating vertical turbine. It could radically improve yield and reduce levelized cost of energy for floating offshore wind projects, according to the Worldwide Wind, which is the startup behind this idea. In simple terms, levelized cost of energy measures lifetime costs divided by energy production. So if an energy system is deployed with initial cost of $100 and annual expenses of $25, the annual cost per year is $125. And if the annual energy production is 1000 kilowatt hour, levelized cost of energy is $0.125 per kilowatt hour. Norway's worldwide wind has a radically different take on offshore wind power. These floating wind turbines features two sets of blades turn to counter-rotate or counter-rotate and the best part is the promise to more than double the output of today's biggest turbines. It's two vertical axis wind turbines in one, tuned to rotate in opposite directions. Taking wind farms deeper into the offshore can open up a lot more opportunities, but as the ocean gets deeper, can we opt for horizontal axis wind turbines? Well, we can, but conventional horizontal axis wind turbines start to make less sense. Here's why. Horizontal axis wind turbines need to hold a lot of heavy components including drivetrains, gearboxes, generators and their colossal blades right up the top of a long pole, so mounting them on platforms brings in challenges in two ways. Number one, building floating platforms that resist tipping over even though possible is a huge challenge. A floating offshore structure that works in deep waters that are deeper than 50 meters makes the heavy top turbines prone to being buffeted by winds even if the buoyant support system is attached to mooring lines anchored to the seafloor. And second, far away from the shore at a water depth of more than 50 meters, a fixed bottom turbine becomes a very expensive and challenging project. Not to mention maintaining the working end of a turbine so far above the ground. As against horizontal axis wind turbines, vertical ones have blades that reach upwards but all the heavy components are at the bottom, so their natural tendency is to sit upright. Also, they can accept wind energy from any direction rather than needing to turn face into the wind, cutting down on some more heavy gear you would find up high on horizontal axis wind turbines. As already pointed out, while comparing on a one-to-one -one basis, they are typically less efficient than regular three-blade horizontal turbines, but by placing them closer together, we could potentially get more energy out of a given patch of ocean. Worldwide Wind has proposed an entirely new type of floating vertical axis wind turbine specifically designed for offshore deployment and massive scalability. Indeed, it's two vertical axis wind turbines in one. The lower one is fixed to the outer casing of the tower and set to rotate one way and the upper one is mounted to a shaft running right up the middle of the tower and it's set to rotate the other way. Under the surface, one turbine is fixed to the rotor and the other to the stator, doubling the relative speeds of rotation as compared to a static stator and generating electricity. They claim to more than double the output of largest horizontal axis wind turbines. Placement of all the heaviest components at the bottom vastly reduces engineering stresses and material costs. But the whole thing isn't designed to sit perfectly upright. These enormous towers will tilt with the wind. And where horizontal axis wind turbines need to be anchored right to the seafloor or mounted on extremely heavy platforms so they won't tip over, worldwide wind can simply put a float partway up its pole held in place by tethers and let its own weight balance hold the turbines up allowing the whole structure to tilt with the wind rather than fighting to stay upright. A lower center of gravity makes the design much more stable as compared to the conventional horizontal axis wind turbines. To give you an idea about how it happens, you may recall a hit-me toy that was quite popular in the 90s. Whenever you hit it, counterintuitively it stands back. This happens because of a lowered center of gravity causes the gravitational force to produce a moment about the imaginary axis passing through the point of support such that it brings the toy back to its equilibrium position. Though the actual dynamics on the floating turbine with heavy base is more complex involving many other factors such as center of buoyancy, buoyant force, this gives you an idea about how a lowered center of gravity leads to better stability. The blades of worldwide wind, vertical axis wind turbine sweeps a cone which helps to reduce the turbulent wake downstream of each floating tower. Wake is a long trail of wind which is quite turbulent and slowed down when compared to the wind arriving in front of the turbine. Reduced turbulent wake translates to increased tower density or the number of towers on a given patch of ocean, which is also a typical advantage of vertical axis wind turbines. And since vertical axis wind turbines are well known to leave considerably less of a turbulent wake behind them than their horizontal counterparts, they are perfectly suited for deep waters far offshore. The ability to tilt will also help them to resist sudden violent wind gusts and damaging vibrations. This design, according to the company, fundamentally removes the engineering restrictions 
that are preventing offshore wind turbines from growing larger to reap the benefits that come with scale. Now coming to the most important aspect, the power output that is expected from this design, if you look at the world's largest wind turbine as it stands, the mammoth Mingyang Smart Energy 16242, standing 264 meters tall, falling slightly shorter than the Eiffel Tower, has a rated capacity of 16 megawatt. Worldwide Wind has quite ambitious plans to grow up to 400 meters in height, dwarfing the world's largest, with a mind-boggling 40 megawatt capacity per unit. Such a high power output combined with a high tower density compared to traditional turbines, according to the company, adds up a levelized cost of energy of less than $50 per megawatt hour, which is less than half of what cutting-edge horizontal access wind turbine installations are expected to deliver by 2027. Floating wind turbine currently has a levelized cost of around 120 to 130 euros per megawatt hour. If we see the current state, the company is working to accelerate development of contra-rotating vertical wind turbine through rapid prototyping. The targets are to have a 3 megawatt model running up by 2026 and the full-scale 40 megawatt machine as soon as 2029. The first prototype that the company is developing is just 2 meters high and 400 watt just to get some first initial experience on a counter-rotating generator. Such a design will also have less of an environmental impact than the conventional ones. It's less of a threat to birds and doesn't produce the same level of noise due to lower blade tip speeds. Another interesting part of this turbine lies in the generator. Most horizontal axis wind turbines use neodymium magnets and neodymium mining is not environmental friendly as we all know. Ferrite, on the other hand, which is a byproduct of steel production, is significantly cheaper than neodymium, but it weighs more. If ferrite is used in the rotor of generator of horizontal axis wind turbine, it would not make much sense due to the location of the generator which is on top of the turbine. But when you have it down at the needle, it acts as a blessing as more weight on the bottom side is what is desired in vertical axis wind turbines. With all the advantages of this turbine, there are points of concern as well. Longevity varies more since all vertical axis wind turbine blades are subjected to strong forces from every angle as they spin. And second, replacing the gigantic bearings that would be needed to support and spin a 400 meter long shaft inside a counter rotating 400 meter long tube might be a big big challenge with the mass tilted off center most of the time for decades and that too in seawater. Giant 40 megawatt quake gel towers way out at sea, undercutting the levelized cost of energy of today's offshore wind could have significant and impactful contribution in the efforts to decarbonization. All that is needed are tangible results. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.